So I'm, I'm David with OcalaGun.com, and I'm with Joe with ExecGun.com, and we're both partners with Cary University, and uh, we're here to just talk about some issues, or maybe not issues is the right word, but questions that new gun owners um, might have. So I guess I'll start off with, um, with you, Joe, and just ask you a couple questions. So what is, what is the proper mindset? When you're when you're thinking about concealed carrying, or if you're new to concealed carrying, or if you're just new to guns, I think first and foremost is to understand the level of responsibility that he takes to own a gun, as well as to carry one with you the whole time. You can be the best shooter in the world. You can be a very skilled with a firearm, but mm -hmm. if you don't have the right mindset, which takes planning and part of your training, I think that it can become dangerous both for you and whomever it is that you may encounter in the future. So that's what I mean by mindset. It's not just the physical skills, but also understanding the responsibility and what it takes to own it, how to react in certain situations, to know the law, and to uh, be able to even change certain behaviors. So that's what I mean by mindset. Yeah, and uh, so one of the one of the mindset issues that I see with a lot of new gun owners is fear. You know, they, um, I've heard different kinds of objections. Like people know that like deep down, they might know that they should carry because they know that the world's dangerous. They know that things happen and we need to be prepared for that. But you know, some of the objections that I've heard were, well, let's just say like one of the big ones was like, Hey, I'm, I'm afraid um, I'm going to leave my firearm in the car and it's going to get stolen. And I don't, I don't want to be responsible because my employer won't allow me to take it in, into work. And so it has to be, you know, in my car. And, you know, I know that there's some workarounds, but what would you say to somebody that had, has that kind of an objection um, to getting started? And that, that's a block for them. It's a legitimate concern. Uh, there is no question that if I was to leave my firearm in the car, and sometimes I have to, Right. If you go into a place that you are not permitted to carry a firearm with you and you have to park across the street and run to that location, let's say the post office. Right. You cannot carry a firearm right. because it's considered a federal building. So I have to park across the street and I have to leave my firearm in the car. There is always that concern. There's always that chance that that is going to happen. I think that part of the planning of carrying a firearm is when you get up in the morning and you know where you're going to go each day, if you mm -hmm. have a plan to go to a place that you are not permitted to carry a firearm, then plan ahead to know that. Maybe it is the time of the day that you go. Maybe it is the fact that you may want to go to a different post office where it's in right. a safer location. So that is where the mindset comes in. It is not just, okay, great, I have the license, I can carry a firearm, I can use it if it happens, but then you walk out the door and you not dress properly in order to conceal it. You don't know where you're going that day or you just you make decisions that are not going to make it easy for you to handle it. So it's a legitimate concern. And therefore the mindset comes in by planning ahead. That is what I would say is plan ahead. A legitimate concern, yeah. great question. Yeah, and I think I think part of part of planning is having the right the right tools for the job, right? So if if you're concerned, maybe you live in an area where there's high crime and cars are broken into all the time. There are things that you can do to mitigate that risk of somebody stealing your firearm. For example, um, uh, last week I did a I did a video posted to my my Facebook page on this neat little lock box right? and it's a fingerprint safe yeah you can actually get that lock box and you can actually if you wanted to right it has it has holes in the back of it so that you can run a cable right and so you can lock it to the bottom of your seat so even if somebody were to break in your car grab the lock box they just can't easily snatch it and run there's a cable that connect you know that locks it to the car and you know, if 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 that was my employer and that and I was in that situation all the time, that's uh, something I would consider is getting that lockbox, you know, keeping it locked up. Now, if you're working for the post office or you're you're taking things all the time to the post office, and maybe your fear is like, hey, I can't I can't carry my gun because I'm always going in and out. Um, 
okay, so like you said, having that proper plan, you know, finding a, a safe place where you can park your car, walking it, lock, making sure you lock your car up, or finding a place, you know, within your car that you can hide it out of plain view. You know, there's there's a lot of options out there for you if, um, if that's something of concern. Absolutely, so that was a, and I love that idea. I love that idea of that uh, the, the one that you spoke to. I saw that video; it's excellent, and a hundred percent, you can. There is a way to do it, whether it's using a cable, whether it's drilling into your car. If it's a car you own and you're going to be owning yeah. for a long time, there there are ways, but it's all in the planning. And and you just gave a perfect example of both a simple way and a more concrete way to do it. Uh, and if someone steals your car, they're going to steal it, but it's not going to be that easy for them to access the firearm if they have it in a lockbox, if they if it is cabled in if it's but you can live with fear of everything my car is right. going to get stolen my gun is going to get stolen i'm going to get robbed i live in it you can if you let that stop you then i believe right there it tells you <laughs> there is a legitimate reason for you to carry a firearm if you are that afraid you need someone to equalize in a situation where if one of your fears might come true. Yeah, and you know, and um, you know, one thing, um, in a, aside from planning, which is a great, great tip, um, is training, you know, because fear is, is not the mindset that you want when you're carrying a firearm. You wanna have confidence in it. And I can tell you that you will gain, once you, once you have that experience and you have, and you have the proper training, you will have that confidence. Cause I remember when I first started carrying, you know, uh, my buddy was like, Hey, you know, you got to carry one in the, in the run round in the chamber with the safety off. And I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Like, I, I can't do that. Right. I was afraid, <laughs> but the problem was, the problem was I just didn't have the training. I didn't have enough range time. I didn't have, uh, I, you know, I didn't, you know, at that point in time, I think I had just only taken my can still carry course and we didn't you know my instructor i i love the guy he taught us a lot of different things um but you know that confidence comes from caring every day um continuous training you know i took why it's safer to do that and really you know you follow those fundamental rules you're not going to hurt anybody you're not going to hurt yourself it's no different than a car right i mean Keeping your finger off the trigger is not any different than, you know, not driving on the left side of the road when you're going down the highway, you know, <laughs> you, could, you could easily swerve over, right? But, you know, we don't, we don't let that stop us. We, we have our experience. We go through driver's ed, you know, our parents teach us and we lose that fear. Because I remember when I first started driving and when I, when I was going on the head on traffic, I was always afraid that the car was going to veer over. And I, it does happen, unfortunately, um, but you can't live your life like that, so... But what other, what other common ob objections do you get or concerns that new gun owners have that really are around mindset? Like, you know, having that, you know, we talk about fear. Um, we talk about planning, you know, um, what else is there? Well, I believe that one of the things that uh, is mentioned is the mindset that just because you own a gun and it's loaded and it is there and you went to the range and you hit the target a few times around the center and you know how it feels is that in under stress situation okay this is good i know how to shoot a gun i'm going i'm going to know what to do i think that is a mindset a lazy mindset when it comes to that because you and i both know we've been in this long enough and we train every day and we train hard enough and we train others to do it that that split second decision that you're going to be making is either you're going to freeze or you're going to take action. The likelihood is not going to be something in between and your action may either cause you to be a victim or a victor, right? Right. So, so I, I believe that part of the planning and part of the training is going to be setting yourself up just like getting comfortable carrying one in the chamber. He's setting yourself up to do the reading, to, to study what you're allowed or not allowed to do in the state in which you live in or the county in which you live in. And 
thinking ahead of time of the different scenarios mm -hmm. which are also available in books, right? There are books and magazines and, and instructors that ask you questions uh, and, and, and put real life scenarios in front of you and ask you what you would do. And if you make that part of the exercise and you can start to think more in terms of, wow, I never thought of that, or wow, that can send me to jail. I thought I could do that, but that I really can't do. And knowing myself, I lose my temper quickly, or maybe I'm too do docile. And being, being self-aware, understanding the different situations and thinking through them, making it part of your training and your plan, that is part of the mindset training of firearm ownership and having a carry permit. So it's an ongoing thing. It's not going to the range knowing, okay, I know how to shoot a gun. I can hit a target, mm -hmm. paper target stationary paper target. And then think that when a six foot two is approaching a 120 pound lady that just mm -hmm. went to the range once and has never been under stress situation or, or fear for her life, is going to be able to hit that target the same way. It's a whole different story. So that is part of the preparation of mindset. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, is that some people may or may not realize that, you know, the bad, the bad guy or bad girl, they're not going to wait for you to figure out how to take the safety off or, no to question. right. No so, question. You know, so you want to build that muscle memory. Uh, I did a video yesterday about, you know, finger placement and keeping your finger off the trigger. You know, I've built that muscle memory that every time, it doesn't matter if it's a plastic gun or squirt gun or a real gun I, my finger goes to the rail every time it doesn't even matter if it's my left or right hand because that's i've trained myself i don't even have to think about it and when i go you know some of my students when i see them you know when i bring them to the range i you know always want to demonstrate safety so when they step up you know the firearm is laid out it's pointed down range we've got the slide back you can visually uh, uh inspect the chamber and then you know some people they they, uh, you know, maybe they're nervous or whatever, but they pick it up and their finger goes straight to the trigger. And it's like, that's something we really got to work on. You know, we really have to work on keeping your finger off that trigger. And the way we do that is we build that me me muscle memory. And that goes back to training and planning to train. So planning to train once a month or one, you know, as often as you can, um, you know, you can't, some people can't go to the range every day. I mean, who can afford ammunition? There's some other alternatives. <laughs> There are alternatives out there. You know, there's the the 21 day dry fire training that Cary University offers, and hopefully we'll be able to offer that soon. Um, so, but yeah, I mean that that's that's really key is building that muscle memory. Um, that's going to overcome those fears. And then the other question I have, and I don't know how much time we have left, but like, so what are some indicators that you need to work on your mindset? What is it? Are what are some things that because you kind of talk to it a little bit about, you know, self-awareness. Mm -hmm. And if you're not self-aware, like, well, first of all, how can we become more self-aware? So we're, we realize what are the, what are our red flags that maybe we're not seeing in our everyday life? Do you have any ideas on that? Like, how do we get to that place where we say, Hey, I got, you know, let, let me just throw it out like this. Okay. So if somebody comes to certify with me and let's say they don't think they have a drinking problem but they show up drunk right or i can smell the alcohol on the range mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not certifying that person they've got a mindset problem but maybe they don't see it so how do how do, how do people recognize if they have a mindset problem or how, well, do, how do you get gain that self-awareness that you can see it I think that one of the main places to start is that if you have a drinking problem, gambling problem, temper problem, we know temperament has a lot to do with it. Being mm -hmm. coherent at a time when you you wouldn't you <laughs> wouldn't handle a deadly weapon like a car. It's a deadly weapon in the yeah. wrong in the wrong hands, right? So the car itself is not dangerous. A gun in itself is not dangerous. It is the operator. So if an operator is not going to admit to himself, which most people who do have these type of problems will not admit to themselves, is have a conversation with your buddies, your friends, ladies, mm -hmm. men, uh, family members, and just say, look, am I considered a responsible person? 
Am I losing my temper very quickly? How, how would you describe me as a person around certain situations, stressful situations? Right. And, and ask for that honest answer. And that will be an indication for you. The people that really love you, care about you, or are close to you, they will know. They will see things you don't see. Mm-hmm. And if, if you are not willing to take on the responsibility of making these type of adjustments, then you may want to reconsider not carrying a weapon necessarily, but what weapon you're going to carry. Frankly, if you're someone who's just going to pull out a, a, and, and brandish a gun because somebody pissed you off on the road and you're just going to show them the gun or you right. can take that, that if you can't help yourself, maybe pepper spray would be better. Right. You know, so, right. Or, or maybe a baton would be better. Maybe yeah. a less, less effective but less deadly option would be better until you can work through those challenges that you have. So as much as we promote and believe that having more sheepdog and concealed carry permit holders out there, a concealed carry weapon does not necessarily mean that you have to conceal a deadly option. It right. can be a less deadly option, but one that is effective enough where you will not go out of control and lose your temper and be tried for murder as opposed to assault or something like that, you have, mm-hmm. you have a chance to get through this in a less harmful manner, both for the victim and yourself, uh, mm-hmm. if you are one that has to work through some challenges. So I think considering other options is the place, but start with the people who know you best so that you know what you need to work on and then come to terms with the fact that maybe I do need to consider other options. Uh, I think that's a great place to start. Yeah, and I I think, you know, you gotta also make sure that when you do ask your friends, like, hey, do your best so that they know that they can trust you. Because if you got anger issues, maybe they they won't give you an honest answer. So another thing I was thinking of, objectively speaking, is, you know, look at your driving record. I mean, are you constantly getting uh, pulled over for reckless driving, speeding, or DUIs? Okay, that's an objective thing. I mean, maybe you had something happen years ago, okay? But, you know, if you, if you can't handle a car, then, you know, that's a, that's a good sign. Like, you know, maybe this isn't for you. Work on getting your mental side fixed first and then, and then go from there, you know? Um, so, yeah, we, and we want responsible owners out there. We want, and that's why we do the training um, and maybe this is a motivation for you to turn your life around if you are having those kinds of problems is like, hey, let me let me get my life fixed first and then we can go from there. But yeah, that's that's an important one. I th- you know, that's a, you know, Joe, I'm thinking about like, I don't know how many firearms instructors go into that depth on it, but I think that's an important, important key, key thing to keep in mind. Like, okay, this is really important when it comes to you're caring is the mindset. And then how do you know you got the right mindset? And there, you know, if, if, like you said, if you're, if you're, if you're, you know, sphere of friends and family, you know, they all, you know, believe in you, um, you stay out of trouble, right? You, you know, you're not abusing drugs or alcohol. You're not on antidepressants or, you know, something, you know, you have a lot of anxiety and fear and, you know, fear is, I think most people are fear of the unknown. So that one's relatively e- easy to deal with. But, you know, if you've got other things going on, depression, uh, we don't want anybody to get hurt. So, you know, solve that first. And that's a great first step. And then eventually you can get there. And it's it's really important because um, you were talking about somebody stealing the car, right? Somebody steals your car. Well, they can do just as much damage, kill just as many people with a car that they can a firearm. There's no question. And, and, and that is why when you and I discussed the topic to discuss today and wanted to come up with something that is of value, uh, you and I agreed that mindset is one of those things that is just not discussed enough because people get excited, just like car lovers. They get excited when they see the car and they see that exhaust and they see those big tires mm-hmm. and the, that fleshy color and they want to get in and they want to drive. And 
they may have a driver's license, but a completely wrong mindset for that particular vehicle. And it's exciting. It's what get people drawn in to watch a video. Right. right. Maybe, maybe some people are not going to like to hear what we have to say and feel as if it's a lecture, but you and I both know that we don't want, we want safe and responsible gun owners and permit holders. We don't want, we believe in the constitution. We will defend it to the end, you and I, but we also want the right people to help us preserve their right to keep and bear arms by being responsible and not making us look as if, oh, it's the constitution. I may be a complete lunatic and but it's the constitution and I have a right. I don't deny that. I'm not a lawyer and I'm a constitutionalist through and through, but safety is something you touched on and part of it is mindset. And we want the right people carrying because the right people will also mm -hmm. step up when the time comes. The lunatics yeah, that, are the ones that are going to be the ones that are causing us that issue and, and creating that platform for us to constantly have to fight to, for the right to keep and bear arms because they don't have the right mindset. And that's why right. you and I decided that this is an important topic to discuss. Yeah, and, and you know, neither one of us, like, okay, we may lose some people or delay some business over this, but- it's okay. That's fine because yeah. we're doing this. It's not about the money for me. And I'm, I, I can tell it's not about the money for you. It's about no. protecting our freedoms, which will lead to safer communities and less crime. The statistics bear it out. You, you can do state to state, city to city comparisons where they have restrictive laws versus non-restrictive. Um, and then the mindset thing, uh, the other thing I wanted to just touch on too is like, you know, if you're 18 years old, right? Florida law. Florida law will not let you get a concealed carry permit till you're 21. You can't That's even right. you can't even purchase a firearm. Somebody has to has to give it to you, right? You can't you can't even purchase it till you're 21. At least a handgun. I think you can do a a long gun, but not not a handgun. And yet, 18 year olds they can. Is there any restriction on them being able to get their CDL and drive commercial vehicles? Not not uh, commercial vehicles, as far as I know, not commercial vehicles, but certainly a gun because I do know people under 21 that are working for trucking companies. So right. they start out so you, could, companies. You, could drive, you could drive a semi down the, down the interstate on back roads. So right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a dangerous <laughs> um, weapon in and of itself. And, and, and they do have to go through training and qualification. Yes. And let's face it, you have to have more hours in training to get a CDL license or even a car for that matter, right? You have to have a permit for a whole year if you're 17, you have to have a permit for a year before you can go ahead and apply for your license. So there is a level of responsibility that is being required mm -hmm. and much less so for a firearm other than age, right? So this is what you can do at this age and this mm -hmm. is what you can do at that age. So I believe that it is up to parents, teachers, instructors to promote and train the young generation in safety, in mindset, in understanding. So when the time comes and they are actually legally at that age, they are well prepared to represent gun ownership and concealed carry permit holders in the right light. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you saw the video of my daughter. I took her out to the range. Love that one. Teach, teach, <laughs> teaching, her the, teaching her the safety rules. I did that with my, my son. One of the things I've always... I've, I've been teaching them like, you know, and they learn the rules and, you know, I let them know, like if they ever want to, you know, the, the guns are off limit, but if they ever want to hold them or take them out, all they have to do is uh, ask me. So that way it's not a mystery to them. And if they do come across something, maybe it's at the, at, at the playground, maybe it's at the friend's house or wherever, um, they know what to do. They know, right. Cause there's adults and I, I've read stories about it where People think like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to unload this gun and then I'm going to point at my friend's head. There was a story that came out with some kids that did that, not knowing that just because you took the magazine out doesn't mean that there's not, it's still not loaded, that there's still one in the chamber and people get killed over that. That's why what we're, the work that we're doing is so important. So, um, what, you know, it, you know, starting this business, I'm in the hole. 
you know, I'm losing money. I'm probably going to start losing more money as the fees go up. But, you know, I kind of look at it as a way this is something I can do to give back. And um, I don't see, I don't see a lot of responsible, um, responsible safety public service announcements, you know, in the mainstream. Now you can, there's plenty of guys on YouTube doing stuff. There's, um, but you know, you kind of have to go out and, and find that and you have to be part of that community. You can learn about it. But I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to reach more people um, with some of the safety information. So a lot of my videos lately have been really, you know, drilling on some safety rules just to, just to bring attention to it. So I'm hoping, hoping people like and share. And if you like this interview, please like and share it. Um, we want to reach more people. We want safer communities. We want to protect our freedoms. Um, we want to avoid accidents. We don't, you know, it breaks my heart every time I hear about something and it can be prevented with some training and a little planning and getting your mindset right. There's a lot, you know, we're, you know, we're, you and I, not, not to toot our own horn, but I believe what we're doing is, is helping, you know, I, if I save just one life doing this, then it'll be totally worth it. But that's why we injury. carry. That's yeah. why we carry. We carry yeah. for that moment and we train every single day for that moment, if it ever, and I hope it never happens. It really, I hope, but unfortunately in the world we live in and regardless, even pre-COVID and pre-riots, crime still happens, wolves are still out there and we want safe and responsible. We don't even want to see the wolf itself get hurt. No, so we don't. Learning the mindset part of it, de-escalating a situation and mm -hmm. understanding when it is safe to, or when it is appropriate to use different levels of force. Uh, that is what we train for, not just to go to the range and be yahoos and, 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 and watch movies and think that we can act out. There is so much more around, around that. And I think the mindset, what do we teach? The responsible instructors that we work with, the people that we watch and what we teach is de-escalate that's the first thing right whether it's the five mm -hmm. b's whatever way you look at it, it's de -escalate. so we're not looking to engage we're looking to de-escalate so for people that do have a mindset issue or a challenge like we were talking about earlier de-escalating may not be the first response and that is why the planning the training is so important to bring to attention you can be a marksman and you may be someone who's got anger issues but you're very skilled but you still used unnecessary force instead of first looking to use your mindset to de-escalate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Realize that the best fight is the one you don't have to fight. And that's why what right. we're doing is valuable and we need to continue that message. And here's the thing too, like the concealed carry course is probably the, it, it focuses much less on the range. You know, it focuses mm -hmm. much less on, you know, trying to get that perfect grouping or, you know, side alignment, things like that. It's really focused on mindset. It's focused about knowing the laws, uh, safety, things that you need to maybe, maybe aren't apparent to you, but you just need to stop and think about it. it you know, your instructors are there to help you understand some of the common, common mistakes that people have. Like if you're at the range and you, you drop something, you, if it falls, you let it fall. You don't try to pick it up waving a gun in your hand i did that as a demonstration one time for folks i'm like look here i'm gonna drop drop my magazine i'm gonna drop around this is what happens if i bend down and pick it up and just so <clears throat> you know the, the concealed carry course that's what it, that's what you're gonna learn um you're gonna learn things that could save your life save the lives of other prevent mistakes um and then the range comes second you know getting that perfect grouping you know target and, and honestly, statistically speaking, I think it's um, most gunfights are within three to five yards, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I could be wrong on that. I think it's really close up. I mean, it's statistically, it's going to be hard to hard for you to miss, except for the fact that if you're not trained and you're scared and, you know, you don't have that muscle memory, then it's going to be harder. But still, it's most, statistically, if you get involved in something, it's three to five feet and it's two to three rounds and it's over. So, you know, it's much more important that you get your mindset right. It's much more important that you know the laws to keep you out of trouble. 
Um, it's much more important that you know the safety techniques on how to pick up a firearm, how to load it, how to unload it, how to do the safety inspects, what, you know, um, how to protect it. Those are the things that you really need to know. And then the range comes second, you know, getting, getting your, your grouping down and, and shooting at say, you know, farther distances and um, your draw, you know, the draw is an important one. I'm not going to, but that's still second to everything when it comes to safety and other things, you know, because you definitely want to learn um because you know you get you have about two seconds if you if you are legitimately in that situation you got about two seconds that's why we carry that's why you carry it one in the, in the chamber with the safety off so you don't have to rack a slide you don't have to fiddle with the safety and you'll find that out and you go if you shoot off enough to the range you'll you'll start to fire and you'll realize oh it, why isn't it working and it's like oh i left the safety on those seconds can cost you can cost you your life cost you time because as soon as you as soon as you show your firearm you've escalated things so even if the bad guy maybe has a gun maybe he was thinking about shooting you maybe he wasn't thinking about shooting you once you pull that firearm then his in his mind he, okay it's you or me and it's going to be you so you 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 need to be prepared for that situation and that starts you know with training and planning building that muscle memory so so all right, David, Joe. I don't know how much where, time we where, have left. Where can people reach you for uh, for concealed carry classes or for private instruction? I'm sorry, I didn't catch you. It froze up for a minute. I said, I said, where can people reach you for private instruction and for concealed carry? Um, that's simple. OcalaGun.com. Ocala you repeat that. That's the best place to go. Or you can find me on on Facebook. Just look for. Uh, Nature Coast Firearms Academy. And how about you, Joe? I'm an executive. I'm the, the, the company name is Executive Gun, and it's execgun.com, E-X-E-C-G-U-N.com. And you are in uh, Pinellas County, is that correct? No, I'm in uh, Sarasota, Manatee Sarasota. County, Sarasota, and Lakeland. So in, in okay. Polk County, but I, I touch only on the Lakeland area, and then uh, Sarasota and, and uh, Bradenton right around there, Manatee County, Sarasota County. Okay, and I'm, I'm up in Marion near Ocala. Well, calagut.com gives it away, but that's where I'm at. Um, so, and there's other areas around the state. So, you know, if you, if, if we're not in your area, we have, uh, we work with some other great instructors. Maybe we'll be able to get some of them on um, and do some interviews with them as well. But um, we have some of the other counties and we're growing. Um, but if you go to careyuniversity.com, you can select your county if we're not in your county. If you're in my county, I would love to see you. So I'd love to meet you at the range. And, um, and I know, Joe, you, you feel the same. So absolutely. Absolutely. It was a great, uh, great, great discussion there, David. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look you forward too. to uh, to seeing more of uh, what you you bring up in future broadcasts. And with that okay. said, any closing statements? No, I would just say my tagline is uh, stay free. Uh, stay safe, stay free. Yep. And, and mine is always train hard, train often and safely. All right, man. Take care and have a great weekend. You as well. And a happy Mother's right. Day to uh, yeah. the wonderful spouse. Yeah. Big, big, big Mother's Day. Yes. Weekend. Yes. All right. Take care, man. You too, brother. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.